Mr. President, I also rise to discuss the Biden administration's failure to contain the crisis at our southern border and how that's having extreme consequences and endangering our very own citizens. Time and time again, Republicans have warned about the damage being done to our country by open border policies launched on President Biden's first day in office. For more than three years, we've witnessed this president and his administration tell us over and over that there is not a border crisis and that the border is secure. I, like most Americans, know that is absolutely not true. President Biden will deliver his State of the Union address tonight, and I hope the American people will listen with some level of skepticism should he discuss his recent election year plans to address illegal crossings at the border. The American people deserve for him to be forthcoming about the border crisis, a crisis that is manifesting itself more and more in serious and violent crimes committed by illegal migrants allowed to stay in our country. The American people deserve to know why or how executive action would be better than simply enforcing the law, the laws that are currently already on the books. Yes, executive orders have the force of law, but they are based on existing statutes. Simply put, this administration needs to enforce the law. Americans are taking the brunt of Joe Biden's policies as crime runs rampant at the hands of illegal immigrants. Last year, Border Patrol agents encountered thousands of illegal aliens with prior criminal convictions, including assault, rape, and murder. Make no mistake, it is thanks to Joe Biden's policies and his refusal to enforce the law that has allowed such criminals into our country and now Americans are becoming victims of their crimes all across the country. Over just two weeks this January, law enforcement arrested more than 100 illegal immigrants in 25 different U.S. cities. Over half of the illegal aliens arrested had convictions or pending charges for assault against children, including sexual assault against children. A month ago, just outside of Minneapolis, a man who was previously detained dressed as a delivery driver to sneak into a home and murder three people while two small children witnessed this crime. Just a few weeks ago in New York, several migrants were arrested for assaulting a pair of police officers. Of course, they were almost immediately released when the Manhattan District Attorney's Office did not seek bail. They were seen smirking and using obscene gestures for the media, showing no remorse for their actions. From the same mob assault, one of the migrants allegedly involved was arrested again just days later, this time for robbing a Macy's in Queens. And now, just the other week, a University of Georgia nursing student with her whole future ahead of her went running on a popular trail in broad daylight only to be brutally murdered. The man charged for her murder entered our country illegally. These crimes combined with the liberal district attorneys and mayors across the country, those who advocate for sanctuary cities and other soft on crime policies have created a nightmare for everyone who wants to live peacefully and safely in their homes and communities without violence. Where is President Biden's compassion for American families and communities experiencing these horrible acts? During his brief and sanitized visit to Brownsville last week, why did the president dodge questions about the murder of 22-year-old Lakin, Lakin Riley at UGA? Why is his administration reluctant to prioritize their safety? I pray that the perpetrators receive justice, and I pray the families of these victims receive God's comfort. Sadly, my home state of Mississippi has also felt the consequences of Joe Biden's policies with many instances of human trafficking. Last year, four illegal immigrants were discovered with a seven-year-old migrant child after being pulled over and detained for driving without a license. 
After Homeland Security Investigations was contacted, the driver attempted to flee on foot and was captured. HSI determined the child was not related to anyone in the vehicle. In another situation, a Mississippi Highway Patrol trooper identified an illegal migrant driving on I-10 in Jackson County with no ID. A passenger, also an illegal immigrant, revealed that they were on their way to Houston, Texas to pick up another man, a woman, and three or four children. After a legal search of the vehicle, items consistent with human trafficking were discovered in the vehicle. Instances like these are unfortunately happening across the country, and our communities are in danger. If you think this isn't happening in your backyard, then think again. Because of the state of our country, there is growing concern and fear among Americans who are wondering if they or someone they love will be the next target. In fiscal year 2023, there were over 15,000 criminal non-citizens arrest. There were over 2,000 criminal illegal drug possessions and trafficking convictions. Additionally, there were almost 9,000 driving under the influence convictions. There have been nearly 200 murders committed by illegal immigrants since Joe Biden took office. 200 lives under President Biden's watch. This is not how the greatest country in the world should operate. Robbery, sexual assault, crimes against children, human trafficking and murder are just some examples of the crimes these illegal migrants are willing to commit in our country. We have to stand against this. President Biden claims he needs more authority to get control of the border. This is blatantly false. The previous administration successfully enforced border laws to get crossings to record lows. The Biden administration repeatedly refuses to acknowledge the border crisis for what it is, a crisis. He opened the border and he can close it. As the president prepares his State of the Union speech, I call on the Biden administration and Democrats simply need to enforce the law. Let's just start with that. We must make this a priority. Americans deserve nothing less. Thank you, Mr. President, and I yield the floor.